Does that look like it's a level horizon on the screen there? Okay. All right. Oh, it sure is, isn't it? Like the old Batman program. So this thing swivels every which way. Oh, does it? This is loose and just hold this on the ball joint. Oh, I see. That looks pretty good there. Okay, good.
good morning. Let me welcome you to this beautiful day, this service outside once again. And as I do, I want you to take up your pool noodle, and we are going to greet one another with waves of joy and, um, and the pool noodles of peace. So we're passing the peace by way of pool noodles to one another. Uh, welcome, welcome again. Um, I'd like you guys, if you're here, uh, whether you're here or whether you're at home, we can wave to folks at home. If you take out your phone and you can turn it on so you're ready to chat when those times come during our service. Um, you can text me. The number is 207-266-9026. And that's the way we can share prayers with one another most readily. A couple things to celebrate. You can, you can even practice right now if there's something that you would like to celebrate a birthday, an anniversary, a milestone, you can text me right now and I'll get it and I'll share it with folks. Um, so that's kind of exciting. One thing I want to um, celebrate is yesterday, Graham Garland and Stephanie Callis were married over at Compass Harbor. Um, so congratulations to them. You all know Graham's um, grandmother, Marie Garland, lives across the street from us. And Stephanie's younger sister, Sabrina, was in Peter's graduating class just this spring. So NDR, local couple, they met in high school and fell in love, and it's really a beautiful thing. So congratulations to them. Um, Jackie Johnson has a birthday today. Congratulations and happy birthday to her. Um, Jen Doherty has a birthday tomorrow. Um, Sue McKay and Chad Kessel have birthdays on the 18th. And Nancy Sawyer has one on the 19th next Saturday, so happy birthday. Um, as I said, I don't see any prayers of um, celebration or joy right yet. So just remember, you can text them to my phone, 266-9026, or you can chat on our, we're doing Facebook Live as well. So um, Steve at the helm is receiving our, our uh, chats and can share them with us. And I'm glad that we are together. I'll invite uh, Renee up to join us. To, to lead us, to help lead us in our call to worship. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And do not forget all God's benefits. Who forgives your iniquity, who heals your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit. Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Who satisfies you with good as long as you live so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. God does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high up above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love. As far as the east is from the west, so far does God remove our transgressions from us. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. We continue with our prayer of invocation, and you'll notice that there's a prayer, kind of a call and response that we invite you to join in quietly. When we 
look over our shoulders at fear shadowing us today. You, O oh God, go before us into tomorrow, making a path through the troubled sea of yesterday's doubts. When our legs tremble from the effort of standing up for what you hope for all creation, you, O oh God, are at our side, offering your strength. Cloud of grace, we offer our love to you. Cloud of grace, we offer our love to you. When we turn our hearts into deserts of stony bitterness, you transform them into oases of joy. When we come up with all sorts of rules for those who come to us seeking to find you, you tear up the list, stretching wide your arms and welcoming grace. Servant of all, we offer our lives to you. Servant of all, we offer our lives to you. When we would clasp old ways with them to our hearts, you open our eyes to that hope which paves the path ahead of us. When we spend each day consumed with worries and fears, you remind us that now is the time to honor you by serving your children. Mist of mercy, we offer our hearts to you. Mist of mercy, we offer our hearts to you. So we're coming to our first hymn. Um, here's how it's going to work. We are grateful to welcome Amber Sharon as our um, ASL interpreter this morning. So Robin will play the play the verse of the hymn. Um, Bradley's going to sing along the second time through, and Amber is going to do some signing. And as you pick up the movements from the signs, we hope that you'll join in. A way of singing and praying with our bodies. when normally in a normal world, normal Sunday, I have all the kids come up and kids of all ages, um, but you're going to stay where you are. But I do see that we have some kids here. Wave at me if you're a kid. Wave at me if you feel you're a kid. Okay, good. Um, so um, what I want you to do, you need a pool noodle. You got a pool noodle, Claire? A pool noodle? All right. Um, so school has started, right? Wave of school has started. <laughs> Wave of school is weird. <laughs> okay, if you are in school and, or you have a grandchild or a child who's back in school some way, whether it's college or anyway, if you're doing remote learning right now, wave your pool noodle. If anyone's doing homeschooling, which is separate from, like, what I think of separate from remote, like, not through the school, 
Nope, nobody. Okay, no grandkids doing homeschooling. Um, if you've got some kind of a hybrid between in-person and remote. Anybody? Yep, somebody over there. Kids are doing that. All right. And if you are in person at school, awesome. Got a couple. And is that every day, five days a week? Yep, my kids are five days a week, too, in person. Um, and they're doing a really, really great job. But I have to say that it's really weird, isn't it? Everything is just totally different, whether you're remote, whether you're at home or back in school. Everybody's got masks on. Um, everyone's staying far away from each other. They can only have so many kids in a class. They have to eat lunch at their desk. Um, it's just everything feels very, very different. And it's harder, quite frankly. It's hard for people, whether they're at, at home learning or whether they're in person. Everything feels different and feels harder. And that's all of us, I think, right now, right? Life just feels a bit harder. And you know, it makes me think there's scripture that we're gonna have we're gonna hear today is about the children of Israel after they've come out of Egypt where they were slaves and they were in the desert and they started getting to this point where they were they were getting kind of worried about whether they were gonna have enough food to eat. Things were harder than I think they thought it was gonna be. A lot harder. And it was very different. Some of them even thought, well, why did we come out here? We could have had all this food back when we were slaves and um, back in Egypt. And they even started thinking maybe that would be better. But what God did was decided to make sure they knew that they were going to have enough. And provided quail, which was meat, every night, and every morning there was something on the ground and it was called manna and they had that and they were only had it it was every day and there was enough for that day and they couldn't keep it for longer they couldn't like hoard it up so that they had it for three months out it was every day god gave them enough for what they needed and i think that is just such a powerful lesson for all of us to remember that in the midst of however hard and difficult things are and how different they are, that if we just focus on that day and that we can trust that God will give us what we need for that day. And maybe we don't look too far out ahead, but we trust that God will provide that day and God will sustain us. That will help us all through this time and strengthen our faith in God and God's love for us. So let us pray. Help us, O oh God, when things are hard and we can't see what's next, to trust you to provide for us day by day. Amen. I invite us to continue together with what we call a time for attentive presence. Maybe listening to the sounds, soaking in the warmth, looking at this beautiful place that God has brought us to this morning. Our service continues with a time of prayer. I invite, whether folks are at home or if you're here, I invite you to chat in your prayers or text in your prayers the 266-9026 just as a reminder. We continue to hold in prayer Ada and Carl, Bob and Jackie, Lonnie and Lee and Ann, Art and Sue, Terry and Rusty, Royce and Katie, Gertrude and Pat, Jack and Dick, Michael, Judy, Hannah, Jeff, Chad, Eric, Darlene, Billy, Levi, Sandy, John, Sherry, Matt, Mike, 
Cheryl, Alva, Skyler, Carolyn, Lizvi, Nancy, Marty, Robin, David, Kelly, Tucker, and Johanna, Mary, Les, Trisha, Valerie, Rob and Fran, George, Sandra, Doug, Shelly, Susie, Jim, and John. We seek God's consoling spirit for those who have suffered losses recently. We pray for healers and caregivers, for workers and businesses. We pray for compassion and understanding, for peace, guidance, protection, and help. We continue together in the spirit of prayer. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. We come to prayer with full hearts, filled with both gratitude and yearning, receptive hearts longing for your presence and strength. Dwell within and among us, O God, that our prayer may be breath and our every breath prayer, deepening connection, inspiring hope. Beacon of steadfast love and mercy, eternal is your word and life-altering your love. When our heads bow low with worry or grief, you lift our eyes to promise. You call us beloved and guide us in righteousness. As the season turns, rekindle in us your unbounded love. Nurture in us your desire for justice and forgiveness. Hold us close. We pause to remember all that opens our hearts to joy. For purpose and meaning, vision and discernment, for reunion and companionship, for the selfless witness of those who serve the common good, for healers and peacemakers, truth tellers and truth seekers, for good friends and good neighbors, for all those who enrich and sustain our lives, angels of kindness endowed with your blessing. For all this and so much more, we lift our hearts in gratitude. As we remember all that weighs upon us, which we would entrust to your restoring presence, we take a moment to bring names or situations to our hearts or lips and take a moment to lift them in prayer, in silence or out loud. We pray for those facing illness or deprivation, uncertainty or fear, loneliness or anxiety. We pray for those awaiting test results and undergoing treatment. We pray for teachers and students, professors and staff, parents and administrators. We lift up prayers as College of the Atlantic and fall sports begin again this week. Gracious one, pour out your cup of mercy upon our troubled nation. Quench the fires of hatred and judgment. Quench the fires of racism and exclusion. Quench the fires of resentment and fear. Quench the fires of hubris and threatening violence. Quench the fires of lies and deception. Quench these fires burning across our country and those burning out west. Turning bright skies orange, the air to smoke. Let your love and mercy flow in torrents of welcome relief. Turning communities from despair to hope, from ash to bud. Grant us courage and strength to follow your path of shalom. Open our hearts to your spirit until your glory is revealed in relentless love, in communities transformed by justice and compassion, 
and in the making whole all that is torn asunder. We rest in your embrace, opening our hearts in prayer. We pray for Linda, whose cancer has spread. As God wills, please aid in wildlife rescue. Prayers for firefighters. Prayers for DiCarlo Dowden. Prayers celebrating beautiful weather and good health. Prayers for Linda, Arlene, and Ed. Prayers of gratitude for the life of Deb Lord and consolation for her family and all who love her. Prayers for Augusta, Deb's daughter, and her new husband as they begin their life together. Prayers for Janet and Jeff who lost their home and belongings in the fires in Oregon. And prayers for all who have lost so much. To your love, O oh God, we entrust all for whom we pray. One second. Prayers of strength for the firefighters as well. God, we entrust to you all for whom we pray, and our prayers, both spoken and unspoken, and ourselves. Together we pray as Jesus taught, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Our scripture reading this morning is from Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 through 15. Let us hear the word of the Lord. The whole congregation of the Israelites cried out to Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For what if you have brought us out into this wilderness only to kill this whole assembly with hunger? And the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because God has heard your cries. And Moses said, The Lord will give you meat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard your cries. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for God has heard your cries. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the cries of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. With gratitude for God's faithful love and hope for God's grace and wisdom to shower upon us and all of God's beloved. Come among us, O God. Amen. Kids and kids at heart, I want you to imagine this. You've gone to a small island, much smaller than MDI, might even have a year-round population of this many, and you haven't brought anything to eat for the week because you read online that there was a grocery store. You get off the ferry, you start walking to the cottage you rented, and along the way that you learn that there is, in fact, no grocery store. True story. What do you do? Luckily, it's a fishing island, so there's some lobster to be had. Turns out that very night is the first church supper in a dozen or so years. And you get bean salad and blueberries and brownies and all that stuff. And you buy a leftover lasagna that'll do for a few days more, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. At the church supper, you meet the island baker, who churns out donuts and blueberry pies and sticky buns at an alarming and shocking pace and who tells you where she lives, just down the road. 
I want you to close your eyes and imagine what all that smelled like. The lobster stew, the lasagna, the baked beans, the blueberry pie. <laughs> My mouth's watering. <laughs> In less than an hour, from real stomach-grumbling worry to a full belly and delectable hope, God is like that. Today's scripture reading comes from the book of Exodus, when the Hebrew people were wandering in the wilderness, escaping from slavery, heading to the land of God's promise. They were feeling hungry and tired and scared. They wondered if it would have been better to endure the predictable hardships of slavery in Egypt than to cope with the unknown hardships of the Exodus. So they cried out to one another, to their leaders, and to God. As the story unfolds, God responds by offering them food, quail at night, bread during the day, puffs of bread like snowflakes, telling them to gather each morning just what they would need for that day, twice as much the day before the Sabbath. At first they were confused, what is this? And they were so hungry they gathered too much and it spoiled. But eventually, eventually they got it. The point of the story isn't just that God sustained them in the wilderness with food, but also that every day, as they go out to gather the tufts of bread, they remembered the goodness of the Lord, God's sustaining love, each day a ritual of receptive praise. Of course, we're all in the wilderness these days. With so much that's strange about our lives, our family, our schools, our church, our work. Maybe your hearts, like mine or like the Israelites, are starting to grumble a bit, wondering where God is leading us. Maybe longing for the familiarity of the challenges we knew before. Remember when we cared, like the Bar Harbor parking show? I can be so eager to look over the horizon to normal that I don't notice or can't see the tufts of blessing that lie scattered all around me, even now. New friendships, a new recipe, a deeper desire to spend time with people I care about, deeper commitment to these friendships. Or notice the ways our church has grown in fellowship with people in our community and even across the country we hadn't known before. All these seeds of blessing scattered on the ground for us to gather in, if only we have eyes to see. Let our, lest our eyes and hearts sag with despair, let us take time to notice the gifts of God that shower upon us even now in the wilderness. I wonder if you've ever had a difficult circumstance where even in the midst of it, you thought to bring with you something to remember it by, a touchstone of the experience. I know some people keep the little hospital identification bands as a, remember, a reminder of what they went through and people who helped them through it. I kept one for years in my little box, my little wooden box of specialness. I've kept my chaplain's nameplate from my chaplaincy training program in inner city south side Chicago and my lab coat too for 23 years. Or maybe you were on a hike and you picked up a colorful leaf. Uh, later on you slipped and hurt your foot and people cared for you and helped you. And you kept the leaf to remember not only the hike and the beauty but also to remind you of the people who cared for you and brought you out safely. I still have Hilda's pom-poms that she made for us to put on our baggage for our mission trips to Haiti. I think her thought was that this would help us recognize our luggage in the mishmash of the airport, and that's true. But so much more, they were a reminder of her love and prayers along the way. Even now, they remind me of her love and God's, God's too, as we made this journey into uncertainty. I packed one in Peter's bags as he left for college. I suspect you have a memory or a symbol, a touchstone like this, too. Sometime, I hope you'll tell me about it. 
Some of you have been given a clipboard and a piece of paper and some pencils. And so I'd like you to write or draw something that you've kept to remember love and care. Maybe it's a stuffy. Maybe something else. In the book of Joshua, when the Israelites finally end up crossing the Jordan River into the land of promise, God tells Joshua to stop right in the middle of the river and pick up 12 stones, to carry them across and set them down, to build a little memorial at the first place they stay in the new land. When he's telling people to pick up these stones, Joshua says, in the future, when your children ask, what do these stones mean? Tell them this is how we crossed over. These stones are a memorial for the people of God, the people of Israel, forever. The reminder to God's people of God's faithful love, even in the midst of hardship. Now I hear that on the way in, somebody saw the pile of stones we had in the basket and said, oh no, not stones again. We've been engaging with stones a lot these last six months, to the day. From the remembrance rocks on our church steps, to the stones and shells that we've written on here at when we do outside church. We've written words of encouragement for ourselves and words to share with others in our lives. Today we'd like you to write a word of encouragement for our church, a hope or wish, something you cherish, something you long for. And rather than taking it with you on your way, leave it here on our little table. And we'll gather them and keep them. And they'll be here next time we worship together in person, whether it's outside like today or inside. In the future, when someone asks, what do these stones mean? Tell them, this is how we cross over. These stones are memorial to the people of God who learned to trust God in the wilderness. The psalmist writes, O Lord, O God, our rock and our refuge, stay with us, strengthen us, lead us and guide us along our journey. Amen.
If you haven't done so already, I invite you to write a word of encouragement and strength on your rock for our church. And as we go, we can leave them here up at our table. A couple things well, uh, that have been brought to my attention. First of all, we pray for our beloved Josephine up in uh, Orono. Um, as she consults with her doctor about a potential skin cancer on her face, so keep her in prayer. And Jane and Kate, thank you guys so much. Your, your music, your gift is stunning, and I really appreciate your being able to be here with us once again. And you keep bringing us good weather, so thank you. I wish I'd known that when I worked on the Sunbeam. <laughs> Uh, a couple ways of uh, other announcements. Um, thank you to the Bar Harbor Historical Society for allowing us to be here. Um, the very first time we did this, it was foggy and cloudy and windy and misty everywhere else on the island except for here. And as I looked at the weather forecast for today, I was a little bit concerned, but I should have known that we will be held in this place of beauty this morning. Um, Amber, thank you so much for bringing um, your sign language interpretation to us, and we have another one before we go. Thank you very much. Um, if you'd like to participate in our upcoming worship services, let me know. Um, Open Table has a, their takeout delivery uh, Tuesdays from 4 to 6. There's Tuesday morning prayer at 8.30 and Thursday evening prayer at 7 by Facebook Live. Um, we're going to see about restarting our sauntering this Thursday, meeting at the church at 10 and taking a leisurely stroll about town. Um, as long as uh, the tourists spin out a bit and the cases stay low, that, that is a good thing to do. Um, special mission offering this month goes to benefit Open Table MDI, whom you might have read, is having really exciting expansion to their program. Um, Fresh Food Friday at the Bar Harbor Food Pantry. They bring in a bunch of uh, perishables, and we get them. So 9 to noon, check it out. Um, we're still collecting remembrance rocks in honor and memory of those who have died. Um, if you want some help getting a rock or painting a rock, just, just let me know, and then I um, often delegate such things to Christy because they turn out beautifully. So um, let me know. If there's anything else you need, let, let me know. Call the church office. Um, just grateful that we can gather together. As our benediction, I'll invite Amber up and Bradley. to turn to those adjacent to you and bless one another with the words, go with God, go with peace.